Here we go. I, I'm stuck here, like probably a lot of you, but I wanna talk about something very important, and that is wildlife conservation. Why? Well, in part, because we're dealing with this. We're dealing with a virus that we think probably came from an animal. Now, we're not sure. Um, pangolin, mm, maybe not. Maybe it was a bat, mm, maybe not. Maybe some sort of intermediate host. Mm, I don't know if we'll ever know. But part of the reason we would suggest it came from an animal in one of the wet markets in China is because we know other viruses came from that. So for instance, SARS came from civets, and we know that Mars came from camels. And it's this human wildlife interaction, particularly in these places like the wet markets in China, which can be really difficult. And there's a lot of illegal wildlife trade happening in those places too. So we need to think about wildlife conservation uh, a little bit outside of the box. My friend Rich said it really well. This isn't just about having animals out in the wild for their own sake. There's, you know, there's a lot of impacts on human well-being as well. So I want to explain one thing in wildlife conservation, and it's not something that's going to solve this pandemic, but it is a piece to this larger puzzle. Basically, how do we think outside of the box when we're dealing with wildlife conservation? All of this starts in my backyard at the North Carolina Zoo, where they have a team that works to help save iconic animals from extinction in Africa. Before everything shut down, I jumped in a zoo vehicle. We headed out into the plains habitat with Dr. Rich Bergel and Dr. Drew Cronin, and they helped me understand how their conservation works via this technology they call SMART. SMART, which stands for the Spatial Monitoring and Reporting Tool. Uh, and it's basically a database and an app that allows rangers in Africa to collect information, data that's necessary in order to get ahead of poaching and prevent poaching before it happens. And they explained to me that it's not that rangers aren't doing a good job at stopping poaching. That is a myth. If you only have a very limited amount of resources and you have a fuel budget that can only allow for three patrols a month, then you have to make sure those patrols are gonna be effective. And that is why a simple program like this on a small device is actually helping. And for example, we have uh, an antelope right back here. And the same way that we're seeing that an antelope here, that if they see one in the wild, they would enter in the species, the number, uh, the sex, footprint on the ground, a snare or some other threat, they can record that. It records the GPS location so you know exactly where that happened. Having this accuracy is key because some of the parks are huge and really hard to patrol. Just one of the national parks that we work in is bigger than the entire state of Massachusetts. It's also built to be very adaptable to these very different locations. Some places where it's used, there's uh, limited literacy rates in the rangers and so you can set up the data to be collected uh, using icons or images. Even if they can't read, you know, I saw an oryx in the field, you can put a picture of an oryx and they can, they can record that they've seen that or a, a shotgun shell or something like that. Uh, They're not in a case, this is the actual phone. It's, it's waterproof, shockproof, and you can, you know, you can bang it on stuff. These devices can, can handle that. And then they're also, just by virtue of taking the device out with them, they're recording information about what they're doing and where they're patrolling. Across the board, there's usually some realization that patrols aren't deployed in the most efficient manner. Whether that's realizing that patrols are staying within five kilometers of headquarters or staying close to roads or staying within the most easily accessible areas of the park. But rangers really respect the data once you can visualize it for them. They can see their effort reflected there on the screen. And even in some places, you're starting to have ranger teams compete for most patrol coverage or who can do a better job. And that's something that you wouldn't see if you just had pen and paper and then three months later they said, oh yeah, you've done a good job on that patrol three months ago. The system is putting high-tech tools in the hands of people who might not have a lot of formal scientific training. So after a little bit of training by the zoo staff, the rangers can operate the system on their own. There's a lot of threats to wildlife unless we change things significantly in terms of how wildlife is protected. A lot of iconic species like elephants, like lions, like rhinos could very easily go extinct in our lifetime. The great news here is that this program isn't just experimental. They told me so many examples of how it's helping. There's a number of examples from parks all around the world where since implementing SMART and then using the information that's provided by SMART, poaching rates have gone down, animal populations have either stabilized or increased, and the, the amount of effort that's being put into protecting these places is also increasing along with that. So if you didn't know, if you visit the North Carolina Zoo, 
you're directly affecting conservation in Africa and other places through the development of and the implementation of programs like this. Yeah, I'm really proud that the North Carolina Zoo has been able to contribute to global conservation um, at the scale at which we are. More than 60 different countries are using the system. We're having an impact on wildlife populations literally around the world. So there you go. I hope you learned something. Hit that like button if you did. I hope everybody stays safe, stay healthy, stay home if you're not doing that already. <sighs> There's so much going on right now. I know this is gonna be extremely hard for so many people, not only if you got the virus, but also if you're losing a job from it, like me. I, I lost all my jobs going forward, which is why I wanna thank my patrons. <laughs> I'm not going to ask any of you to donate to my Patreon now because I know this is hard for anybody. Um, but I do want to thank the ones that are there now. Also, if you want videos to binge watch, I did more with the zoo. You could watch those. Or I have a whole playlist here, uh, intro biology stuff that I think everybody should watch. All right, see you in the next one.